Hello, everybody. What's going on? Welcome back. This is Force here, and finally, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on the Division beta. Yes, uh, the beta just concluded, and a lot of people have been asking me, Force, what do you think? We've heard you talk about this game. We know you're excited about it, but what do you think now that it's out? Well, yes, leading up to actually getting hands-on experience with it. This was a game that I really thought I was going to be into. And in many ways I am, but there's also some things that have me greatly concerned. So before we get started, there's two things you should know about me. Number one is I really like third-person shooters. It's a genre that I've always enjoyed. I've got a soft spot for them, you could say. Number two is that progression systems tend to work on me. I don't know what psychologists would say that says about me as a person, but progression systems really tend to pull me in. I like improving my character, getting new gear, and seeing them get more powerful over time. I probably have some sort of complex. If you feel like YouTube analyzing me, go ahead and do so. I have an affinity for parts of this game. Now, I don't think this game is perfect. In fact, leading up to the beta, I talked about some potential concerns, and some of those concerns really did seem to come to fruition. But it's also important to note that in the beta, aka demo that we got, it was just a, a portion of the game. Map size equates to what appears to be about a fifth of what we'll see at launch. We also didn't have access to much of our character progression. We didn't have access to most of our skills. We didn't have access to perks and talents. We didn't have access to most of the base of operations. There's also apparently a restriction in the enemies. What we see in the game right now is two factions. There's evidently going to be about four. And for whatever the heck reason, if I were to guess it would be story based, they don't want to show us the other two. Part of me hopes that there's just something crazy out of left field that they're going to throw in. Like, I don't know, some zombies or aliens come down. But because Tom Clancy is on the title of this game for fucking God knows why reason, because it didn't have to be, that's probably not going to happen. I don't expect anything too zany. I expect us to be mostly fighting humans, which is a concern I think we'll talk about in a little bit. But yes, this was a restricted beta. We didn't have access to the entire game. But the point of this, quite clearly... Because they let everyone hop in with pre-orders, and because they handed out keys like hotcakes, which, where does that expression even come from? Are hotcakes readily available somewhere? Because I would love some. If you could send me some hotcakes, that'd be fantastic. Because it wasn't difficult to get into this beta, this is clearly a, hey, check out this game before it launches, which perplexes me a bit. Because I think there were some decisions that they made like completely restricting your character progression, giving us no talents and no perks, so we don't even get a good indication of how that plays, making the world basically feel empty on the PvE side of things, and hell, even in PvP, I spend most times running around more so than actually shooting enemies. And in case you thought differently, I wanted to be shooting enemies most of the time. Now, so what I've heard is that they eliminated patrolling spawns and, and characters for moving around the world. I hope, I hope that is true, because otherwise the game felt terribly dead as we move from encounter to encounter. Now, I'm not going to dive too much into that. I've got some bullet points here, and I want to stick to my list, because otherwise I'll probably forget things. So the first thing that I want to talk about is undoubtedly the most important thing for me in any game, and that is the gameplay. If the gameplay is not good... Well, it's a game. That's what you come to games for. If you just want a good story or good visuals, you can get those in the movies. If you just want a good story, you can get that from a book. You can get good story and good visuals from places besides games. What makes games unique is the interactivity. What makes games unique is the gameplay. So again, for that reason, this is what matters the most to me. So how is the gameplay in The Division? It's pretty standard fare. It's a third-person shooter, much like many third-person shooters have played in the past. Nothing too wild and crazy is happening. Again, because of the branding of Tom Clancy, they could have just called this Division and done more with it. That's all I'm saying. But because of the branding of Tom Clancy, it's a realistic setting. It's a realistic world. It's got realistic weapons. Guns shoot more or less like you expect them to. And I think the third-person nature of it makes uh, the impact of that shooting... A little bit less so. Some games do it better than others. A lot of times when it comes to how a game feels, that, that's such an ambiguous thing. But there is some factors that really play into it. 
Those factors include things like screen shaking, things like the sound, things like the, the responsiveness from the enemies. When you shoot them with that heavy weapon of yours, do they react? Do they physically react? The sound, the visuals, and enemy animations all play a big role into shooting. And while it is good here, and I, I, I do like the gameplay, moment to moment I enjoy shooting enemies, that's where a lot of my frustration came from with there being a significant lack of enemies to shoot. Moment to moment I enjoy it, but also it doesn't blow me away. I'd say it's good enough to keep me around. It's good enough for me to want to continue to be in this world. I like it. Now, as we talk about the gameplay and the shooting, you can't help but bring up this term that gets brought up every time people talk about The Division. And that is the bullet sponge. So let's talk about the bullet sponge. This was one of my major concerns leading up to the game. After playing through it, uh, going through the PvE portion on several characters, yes I made four characters, I went through all of the side missions and the one main story mission in this game four different times. Bullet sponginess didn't appear to be an issue. It really didn't. For the solo play, it didn't appear to be an issue. Now, we've got this situation of when you group up with more people, the enemies respond by getting tougher. They can take more hits. So I think a lot of the concern when it came to bullet sponginess, as we had those preview videos from the press events that they had a, a month or so ago, that was a groups of four people, and the enemies subsequently took a little while to take down. As I walked through the Division solo, and I did my missions, Everything died pretty damn quickly, and it wasn't even with headshots, but with headshots, it was even more hilarious. You run around with a marksman rifle, and you get headshots while you're doing content at your level solo? Everything dies in one hit, with the exception of bosses. We've got these mini elite-style characters. There's basically three different versions of enemies in this game. The red health enemies, the purple health enemies, which have a little bit of armor, and then the yellow health enemies, which uh, basically equate to bosses. Red health enemies will die in a single headshot when solo. Purple health will take two shots. A headshot and a body shot will suffice. And yellow enemies, they take a little bit more. When you do encounter bullet sponginess, which you will when you play with a group, which you will when you fight bosses, which you will in PvP, is that okay? Well, that's a matter of subjectivity, as most of everything that I'm saying here is. But it's okay within the confines of what this game is. And what is this game? Let us not forget, this is an RPG. But more importantly, this is an RPG with vertical progression. Haven't heard of that term? Don't know what it means? Well, we all know what vertical is, going from the bottom to the top. Progression in a vertical manner means you start off with low numbers, and as time goes on, those numbers climb the ladder. They get higher and higher. An RPG with vertical progression, as opposed with horizontal progression, sees constant creeping of the power of your character and of the enemies that you face. Due to the fact that this was the design decision that they made, they decided we want to make a shooter with RPG vertical progression. The guns start off doing this amount of damage, and by the time you get to the end game, they do some hundred percent more damage or however much more as your damage goes up if enemy's health does not subsequently increase then they just die insanely quick but again as i mentioned when playing solo it appeared to not be an issue not at all and it's one of those things where i think that we have to know what we're signing up for and maybe people just wish that this wasn't that that we didn't have guns that do more damage over time. That we didn't have stats that make our character do more damage, have more effective skills, and have more HP ourselves. If you were just hoping for a third-person shooter that has guns and basically all the AKs do the same damage, then this isn't probably going to be the game for you. Because this is a game where I can find an AK that's better than your AK. And if we shoot at each other with those AKs, my AK will win. That's just what this game is. And once more, knowing what you're signing up for is important. You could certainly hope that this wasn't the game. You could have wished that the developer made a different design decision. But this is the one that they made. Think Borderlands. Think Destiny. When it comes to the gear systems, that is what you're looking at. 
the power scale goes up. Now, unfortunately for this game, unlike Borderlands and Destiny, they're going to have a harder time making interesting and unique guns, and we're going to be playing with more or less the same thing over time, just at more effective numbers. We're not going to have any crazy laser guns. We're not going to have <laughs> any rocket launchers that shoot electricity. Things like that aren't going to occur. We're going to be dealing with the SCARs, the marksman rifles, the MP5s, the assault rifles, the pistols, and then we're going to have skills which appear to give us some more interesting things, but it's all rooted in reality. So it's it's an interesting mix. It's an interesting amalgamation. I, I'm not sure how it's going to work out in the long run. And that, that also comes into play when it comes to the enemy types. We talked about this a moment ago, but the enemy types. What types are there? Human. Anything else? Nope. <laughs> not as far as we can tell. And I, 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 I'm not led to believe at all that when they introduce the two other factions that are supposedly hidden right now, that weren't in the beta, that they'll be anything other than humanoid. But guess what? I, like, I, I don't even care. People are tired of zombie games. I don't even care. This is a game about a virus in this world. If they just threw zombies in here and had us face off against absolutely huge monstrosities, I want them to come out of left field and surprise the hell out of everybody. That is what I want. Because I'm concerned that we're just fighting humanoids for the extent of this game. I'm concerned, but I expect it. But think, just imagine. Imagine if, for whatever reason, they've hid this in the marketing. They want this to be a surprise. They want to say, hey, guess what? You're going to be fighting zombie amalgamation, like humongous, like, oh. My head spins and reels of the possibilities. Zombies, aliens, whatever. I think all that stuff would be fantastic in a game like this, especially because it is a RPG with vertical loot progression and incremental character progression. But I don't expect it. So enemy variety is a grave concern. Over time, I think I'm just going to get tired of shooting humans in the head with this type of system. And that's the thing. I think that's the important distinction. There are plenty of third-person shooter games that are rooted in reality, but they're also not RPGs. So bullet sponginess from bosses and stuff isn't really as much of a thing that you have to worry about. It's more about, uh, how do we defeat this helicopter, shoot out the gas tank, and stuff like that. And who knows, maybe there's room for that in the division as well. Maybe some of these upcoming factions will have access to high-grade military materials, and will be shooting things other than humans the entire time. You should know what you're signing up for, and this is one of those games. Your gear will get better, that will allow you to more easily defeat enemies that you've seen before, you will come up against enemies that are harder, that take longer to kill, and as you get better gear, they will subsequently become easier to kill. And that's a process that just keeps on rolling until you hit the end game, the max level. The big question mark in this game, what is that going to be? This game has threat reduction. This game has the increasing of threat. This game quite clearly is lined up to have some sort of PvE elements. Why have silencers that reduce your threat if threat isn't a deal? There's been talk of raids, maybe even four-man dungeons. But right now, there's been zero specifics laid out. We don't really know. We don't know. We do not know what the end game is going to be aside from Dark Zone PvP. And we're going to get into Dark Zone in just a minute. So when it comes to the gameplay, once again, I want to say that I've enjoyed it, it's not mind-blowing, and while bullet sponginess hasn't been as much of a thing in the solo experience, it will still be present with the harder enemies, with the elites, and certainly with the PvP. Now I'd like to talk about the world. Uh, the world is an interesting thing because it's one thing that I think is absolutely amazing about this game. Number one, visually it is stunning on the PC set at ultra settings, the game is absolutely gorgeous. They do appear to have some optimization issues. I feel like most people I talk to had a problem running this game where we don't have problems running other games. And even though this game is gorgeous, I've played better looking games on my PC and I had to do some finagling to get this to work in a smooth manner that you're seeing run in the background. The game looks gorgeous. The detail level is through the roof. Everywhere you go, 
seeing debris scattered among the ground. Trash bags piled up, cars just everywhere in the streets. But as we alluded to earlier, this world looks gorgeous, but it feels dead. And in a sort of post-apocalyptic scenario, that makes sense, but in a gameplay scenario, it's freaking boring. The beta was me running from encounter to encounter, with at most seeing gangs of two or three enemies scattered around a body. And I ran into more people who needed med kits than I ran into in enemies. And we need to remember, this game being a third-person shooter, I want to shoot things. And having to spend four or five minutes running from side quest to side quest without seeing enemies, but again, maybe a group of two or three that die very quickly, it wasn't fun. The world is beautiful, but it needs to be more populated to be an interesting gameplay experience. If that's what they want, if they want to stick to, hey man, this is the apocalypse, lots of people are dead, so it, it, there's not much going on, sure. At that point, this game becomes a third-person shooter slash running simulator. And I really hope that once the game launches, those rumors turn out to be true, and they just got rid of enemy patrols, and maybe those additional factions that have yet to be revealed will also be taking up space within this world. That's what I'm hoping. I've really got my fingers crossed, but I don't know. This game looks gorgeous. It's beautifully detailed. I, it's really stunning. It feels a little corridory at times, but there is verticality in some parts of the world. You can climb ladders. You can get onto some rooftops. And there is a subterranean portion of it, but I think people made a bigger deal out of it than, than what it actually is. Because what was in the beta, there was like maybe two underground areas and it was just basically a couple of pathways that you go down you walk a couple of corners and then you go up it was pretty straightforward it was pretty simple so i'm a little bit worried and especially as we talked about the map size earlier the map size we know what the final map size is going to be developers have confirmed it in interviews unless they were just lying through their teeth then the map size that we see in the beta is what's going to be at launch. We just have that extra red line of the beta restrictions. But this section of Manhattan, with the exception of maybe a tutorial area that's possibly in Brooklyn, I'm assuming that's going to be insanely small. It looks like it might be a little tiny. It took less than two hours to explore all of the landmass, all of the side streets, go up any of the ladders, climb onto any of the roofs that were available, and that's within what we have, which is once more about one-fifth of what the total map will be. You extrapolate that out. What are we looking at? 10, 15 hours? To see all of the landmass? Uh, is that enough? Well, it's, that's up to you to decide. And while I'm on this topic, let's just say that they fill up the streets with more enemies. The, the encounters aren't so few and far between. Something else I'd really be interested in seeing them sort of incorporate is the system that Destiny did of having these world encounters that periodically or randomly show up, having wandering boss groups, basically. I think something along those lines could add a lot of fun and enjoyment to exploring this world, because as beautiful as it looks, once again, it feels kind of dead. And I bored of it pretty quickly. Only a handful of side missions, encounters, and only a single story mission, which, um, let me, let me say here, I heard there's about 10 of these story missions in the game once it launches. We had access to one of those in the beta. Maybe it's not surprising that they didn't show us more than one story mission if there is indeed only 10 of them. Which, to be frank, the way it appears to be laid out, I wouldn't be too surprised. Having access to a fifth of the total map size... And seeing that that one story mission was in a set specific location that you could repeat on harder difficulties, mind you. If there's only 10 of those, I'd actually be surprised because if you pull this out, I would, I'm only expecting maybe five or six story missions. It probably gets more intense in the later areas, though. I'm assuming that's how it works anyways. We're assuming that's how it works. So anyway, let's talk about the PvP. All of the PvP in the game is done in the central area of Manhattan known as the Dark Zone. It functions in many ways a lot like the other areas of Manhattan, except there aren't these side missions and encounters, but there are groups of AI enemies, and you defeat these enemies and boss camps, 
having the chance to loot a Dark Zone chest with a Dark Zone key that you've acquired through killing some of said enemies. All of this in the process of trying to get more loot, get Dark Zone currency to purchase loot from vendors, and while you're doing this, there are other players around you who at any point can turn around and demolish you. Tons of fun. And I enjoyed it uh, both in the group setting and in the solo setting. In fact, I mostly played in the solo setting. And I found it to be surprisingly fun and effective. I, I would have thought initially that if you play this game solo, you're just going to get destroyed. There'll be groups of four running around all the time. But that's a complaint that I've seen, and that's a thought that I had. But that's let's be real here. That's not realistic. Most people don't have three other friends that they're constantly playing with. In fact, I would say groups of four were the exception, not the rule. Most of the time, I saw a single person or a group of two. Nine out of ten times. And I played mostly in those 40 hours. I'm going to say at least 30 was in the PvP. Most of the time, a single person or a group of two. You come across that random group of four. They're all rogues and they're camping on a rooftop. Everyone just rushes them and destroys them. and It's kind of funny. The notion of a, a solo person is constantly going to get crushed by groups of four. It was not accurate in actuality from my experience. It just wasn't the case. That's not what happened. I think people who play this game solo are going to be just fine in the PvP. I really don't think you have to worry that much. It doesn't appear to be the case. So go in, solo rogue if you want. After you go rogue, be prepared to run around a bunch because, well, people are going to chase you. The rogue system as it stands is an interesting one. You know, the person who shoots first isn't even the person who goes rogue first. Uh, I talked about this with my friends. Total Biscuit was complaining about this, and it's a fair complaint. The damage number that I heard is 20%. You have to deal 20% of a player's HP in order to go rogue. So if someone starts shooting you and you turn around and shoot them and damage them quicker, you will go rogue before them. And then you will have the red skull on your head, and you will have everyone chasing you around, even though you were, in fact, just defending yourself. I don't know exactly how they can fix this rogue system without making it so that accidental fire puts everyone into rogue. But you know what? I don't know. Maybe that's okay. Maybe if you accidentally shoot someone, you should get put in a rogue. Maybe you should be more careful. I don't know that I'd be that upset if that was the case. Maybe as soon as you shoot someone, you instantly get put into rogue. But how's about something like this? Maybe you get put into rogue as soon as you shoot someone, but it's only for five seconds. And then if you continue to shoot someone, the duration of your rogue timer goes up. So if you accidentally shoot someone, you can say, oh, sorry, there's a chance they won't shoot you back. Or they will. I mean, if this was real life, if someone started shooting at me, I'm going to turn around and pop them in the head. This isn't real life, though. This is a video game, and we have to consider fun gameplay mechanics. I, I think that this would sort of fit with the theme of the PvP. Once again, remember, this is a game where the PvP is clearly inspired by the likes of H1Z1, by the likes of DayZ. It is tense. There is an unknown. There is an uneasy feeling whenever you come across another player. Will they attack me? Now, unlike DayZ and H1Z1... When a player decides to be someone who attacks other players, they have a huge potential negative consequence. Number one, there's a skull on their name that everyone in their vicinity can see and trace them around. You basically have wall hacks for any player killer in the game. And number two, if they die as rogue, they lose keys, they lose any gear that they might have had, and they lose a significant amount of experience and currency. The flip side is, if you are a rogue and you survive, well, you get that currency. You get that bounty that was on your head. So it's a risk-reward system, but again, unlike the H1Z1 and the DayZs, if you run into someone in H1Z1 who just killed another person, there's a good chance you won't know. If you run into someone in the division who just killed another person, you are going to know and you are going to want to shoot them because there's no side effect to you shooting them. Shooting them doesn't make you go rogue. It just means that if you kill them, you get to collect a bounty and whatever gear they had. That's a pretty awesome incentive. So it's kind of weird where they have this game that says, hey, you can do this, but hey, it's going to be punishing unless you decide to run around and hide. 
or hold your ground. Holding your ground is much less effective from everything that I've seen. The best way to successfully rogue is to kill someone, run around, find some good spots that are hard to get to, and wait for that timer to drop. If you're constantly engaging, and obviously that's the case for solo, but even in groups. Any groups that I ever saw constantly trying to engage people, unless they were taking advantage of an exploit, a bug, or sitting in a corner where they can't be flanked upon, they always died pretty quickly. I never saw a successful manhunt, because every time I saw a manhunt, I took care of business. That doesn't mean successful manhunts haven't happened. I'm just saying, I, I don't think it's, it's tough to go rogue as a group. I even think, honestly, after my experience, it's tougher. I've had greater success going rogue solo than I have being in a group and standing my ground. If you're in a group and you run around in circles after you go rogue, though, there could certainly be some success to that. Especially if everyone splits up. Don't be a stupid. You stick together. That just means you're going to be all in one place when the entire server comes to you. Split up. It'll be smarter. So all around, to wrap up my thoughts on this game, we've touched on some of the points. And there might be some things I missed. I guess I should also mention uh, the last day of PvP on the PC servers. It's pretty disappointing. Saw lots of bugs. People using infinite grenades. Saw invisible people, invisible characters, who are consequently also invincible. But I guess if they're invisible and you can't shoot them because you don't know where they are, it doesn't matter if they're also invincible. Because you weren't going to be shooting them in the first place. Those things have me gravely concerned and hopefully those are sorted out because PC is my platform of choice. This game is gorgeous on PC. It feels better to play on PC. I just enjoy it much more. But if the PvP is riddled with... Invisible people or people bugging out the game to get infinite grenades. That's gonna very quickly dissuade me from continuing to play it So here it is the end of it. Let's wrap it up Do I enjoy this game? Yes Will I be buying it and playing it on release? Yes Am I still concerned? Are there still big question marks? There are the big question marks are the end game is it just going to be PvP? Are we getting those dungeons and raids? Big question mark is, is the world going to be filled out? And how quickly are we going to bore of just shooting humans and bullet sponges countered by better gear, countered by more bullet sponges, countered by better gear? That back and forth with just one enemy type. I don't know. And that doesn't mean I won't enjoy the game and I won't feel satisfied when I leave it. But that might mean that I don't stick around with it for as long as I could have if Variety was present. So let's keep our fingers crossed that they have some big tricks up their sleeve. And there will be lots of interesting Variety and things keeping us around for a long, long time. Because as I said at the top of this video, I have the affinity for a third-person shooter with vertical loop progression. This is the kind of game that I want to love. And right now, I just kind of like it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. My final impressions on the Division beta. There are rumors of an open beta coming in the future. If that is the case, I will play it. Hopefully there will be more and different things from what we saw here in this beta. And I will report to you on that as well. Also expect more coverage from me on the Division. I've got a boatload of PvP footage. Some hilarious, some awesome, some interesting. And I look forward to showing that to you guys. Alright, that's going to do it for me here today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. I'll see you later. Area secured. Hostiles neutralized. We need to protect this block from these scavengers. We need to try to out there.